I'm going to talk about the confusingly, or at least seems confusing to me, Windows subsystem for Linux, which is a subsystem of Windows for running Linux. Um, very brief background, I spent many years writing commercial software for Linux and now, and now I'm writing it for Windows, so I was faced with the problem of making my life more bearable. Um, but fortunately, Microsoft has come out with this WSL, which is a sort of, it's not really like a VM, it's basically the Windows, a Windows daemon pretending to be a Unix kernel. Um, and what it means is that you can run unmodified uh, Linux programs on Windows. And, and it actually works surprisingly well. Um, so there's, you have to install a distro, which is kind of weird because you don't, because it's just, you don't get the normal GUI unless you do weird things. But I think it's Ubuntu and OpenSUSE and there's another one that it supports, which I don't remember. Or maybe they used to be Fedora, I don't know. Um, so anyway, this is the thing which you can install on Windows if you're forced to use Windows. Um, and it basically will get you a bash shell and you can run, um, you can run, I installed Ubuntu, so you basically just, you can install packages with apt-get and they will run. It doesn't have a GUI out of the um, box, but if you install a, if you install an X server, you can get it to work. If you want to scroll down, there should be a code block. No. Well, I'll just mention this. It just runs Bash. It doesn't matter what you want. You get Bash. Um, but I like Zed Shell, so I just put user bin Zed Shell or whatever it is at the bottom of my Bash RC, and that solves that problem. Um, so yeah, if you scroll down to here, so basically VCX serve is just, it's not the most polished thing, but it's just basically a port of X11 to run on Windows. Um, so basically I put some bash here, or was my Z2 if, if it's not running, when I start a WSL session, then it starts running. Um, so I don't start up a normal um, a normal desktop environment, but this does mean that you can run Linux GUI apps out of the box. They don't all work that well, <laughs> but it allowed me to run Emacs anyway. Um, I wrote some funky code to, to create bash aliases or Zed shell aliases for Windows batch files, but you don't need me to walk you through that right now. You can ask me about it if you're interested. And yeah, it's useful. I'll just let you ask questions if anybody has questions. Carriage return line feed. That's my question. It's, it's, it's line feed because you, you are installing unmodified Linux binaries from the normal um, repos that your distro would use. So they don't really know that they're running on Windows and so they use, um, they just operate as normal Unix programs, so by default. The other thing about it is Linux gets its own file system, but it's also able to access the Windows file system. So you have a sort of normal Unix file system which Windows can't see but then within that, you get a slash mount, slash C, slash mount, slash whatever Windows drive letters you have. So you're able to access Windows files from within Linux. But I guess that's essentially functionally the same as if you had the mounted, say, as network shares or, or NTFS shares on a dual boot machine or whatever with the limitations that you've run into there. Only worse because Windows likes to lock files when they're open, which it can't do if it's not running. <laughs> So really what I was thinking was the difference between running this and running it on a virtual machine under Windows is that it is part of the system. It gets to access the 
regular files. Yes. And, and, in it, and the other thing I should mention is you can run Windows executables from inside your shell. Um, so you're basically, to call out to Windows stuff, you gotta jump through hoops a little bit, but you, you can basically, you're not just using a, you're not just using your bash or Z shell or whatever to do sort of contained Linux things. You're able to use them. Essentially what I do is, is use that instead of um, command.exe for 99% of what I need to do. But if it's not contained, and I think that's got to be one of the big stories here, then it's got to have a viewpoint of the file system, and that's where the carriage return line feed question comes up. Yeah. But... If you look at files outside of the Unix enclave, they've got carriage return line feeds and other wacko stuff. Yeah, well, not other, <laughs> they've got carriage return line feeds with, I don't know, most text editors are just deal with that. Um, but there are other things, there are other file types in NT that the concept is kind of alien to Unix, I think. I'm not sure because I never used it. But. Yeah, I don't know. I, you'd have to give me an example. It, 